Hey, it's Mark Andrews with episode 14, 14 of OCFOA Plays of the Week. Got some plays from Orange County and a lot of plays from Steve Coover. Let's get going. Okay, we ended uh, episode 13 with a roughing the passer play, and uh, we've got, I'm going to start with another one. Um, we show the definition. I'm not going to read this, but uh, notice the last sentence, no defensive player shall commit any illegal personal contact foul listed in 943 against the passer. And so I decided to make a little summary of 943. And there are the, uh, what, 14 different uh, personal fouls listed in 943. Notice that uh, M, target an opponent, is included. So that means if a passer is targeted, it's not just a targeting foul. It has the potential to be a flagrant foul, but it's still, it is always roughing the passer, okay? So let's take a look at this. Watch number 40 there. You can see the quarterbacks down. Let's take a look at it from the end zone. Keep an eye again, keep an eye on number 40. All right. So let's take a look at number 40's actions. We've got the ball away, and he is, what, at least a yard and a half, two yards away. He knows this ball is thrown. Now watch what he does, lowers his helmet right into the side of the helmet ahead of the quarterback. That is an extremely dangerous play. That quarterback is concentrating on his throw. He doesn't even see this coming. And then we get uh, the quarterback down, obviously. We don't have a flag on this, and I am I, I can't figure out why. It, it, it's uh, my only guess is that you know, we're not watching the quarterback after the throw. Referee, this is your primary responsibility to protect that quarterback. We've got to keep our eyes on the quarterback and not watch the play. All right, moving on. All right, in this play, we're going to see contact on a defenseless receiver. And I want you to want to remind you of the four factors that we take into consideration for legal contact on a defenseless receiver. So. If the, if the opponent is playing the ball, we allow more contact. In other words, you have a train wreck, they're both playing the ball, we're going to allow that. If the opponent wraps the defenseless player, uh, tackles him with his helmet outside the frame of the opponent, and the contact is in the strike zone, those are all components of legal contact. And we have to evaluate contact based on those requirements. And if we have contact other than this type of contact we have potentially excessive contact to a defenseless player let's take a look at this now let me roll that back a little bit for you now the first question is is the player defenseless so there he is he's in the act of trying to catch this ball and you can see that um, the defender has him pretty well, you know, sized up. He's coming in. Now he can choose to t do. He can wrap him right here. He no problem coming into the strike zone, getting his helmet outside the frame. And what does he do? He lowers his head, lowers his shoulder, and I think you can make a real strong argument for targeting on that. Let's see what Steve has to say. Usually when helmet goes back after being struck in the front, it's a good bet there was helmet contact. Yep. But, like you said, don't guess. Um, so at the very least, Steve is saying this is excessive contact to a defenseless player, um, and you should rule targeting. Now, watch this official. He has it. Watch, watch, his, watch his hand. He goes to his belt right there. He's going to pull the flag. And for whatever reason, and it may be because the uh, – watch the, the – the, the offensive player pops up right away. Okay, but that doesn't excuse this action. Just because he came up, we're not going to let that, that type of contact go. And he just waves it off as an incomplete pass. This is a missed call for uh, a personal foul for excessive contact. All right, moving on. Okay, I'm going to let this one run again. I want you to make a judgment. What do you got here? Or do you have anything? It's going to be a pass down that uh, headlinesman side of the field, right at the sideline. Keep an eye on the defenders. You 
give it to you one more time with slow motion. Okay, so I think you've probably figured out the question is, do we have excessive contact on a defenseless player, in this case a receiver? And remember what our four criteria are. Is he play, does the defender play the ball? Does he lower his target into the strike zone? Does he try to wrap him? And is the helmet outside the frame? Now helmet contact, I don't think that's a component here. Maybe a little bit, but I wouldn't call it that. But there is no attempt by this defensive player to play the ball or to wrap this player. He's simply punishing him as he goes up. And uh, we get two flags on this play. Watch. Boom, boom. Let's see what Steve has to say about it. DB chooses not to make a play on the ball, does not lower target or attempt to wrap up. Ha! We're on the same page. Rather, he pushes the defensive, the defenseless receiver who is airborne further out of bounds into the ground. Great call. Okay, guys, so for Orange County, San Diego, this is, we want this called. If you're watching this in another part of the country or the state, you know, talk about this, decide how you want to handle a play like this. But I think this is, I think it's a great call. All right, moving on. All right, the kicking game. Expect the unexpected, especially during playoffs. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to leave Steve's notes in because it, you really need to be told what's happening here. So you saw the, uh, the receiver right here catch the ball. He's going to run up into what Steve calls a starburst. And the idea here is that you confuse the uh, kicking team into who has the ball. But from an officiating standpoint, we have to remember that that ball be cannot be handed forward, right? That is illegal handing if they do hand it forward. And I, there may be one player there that he could hand it backward to, but the rest of these guys, it would be a forward handing uh, situation. And sure enough, he handed it to that guy who is definitely in front of him. See, this guy right here got the ball. So as officials, we've got to do some little, little mental gymnastics. Say, hey, wait a minute, can he, can he legally hand that to him? Now, at this point, you may not even know that he has the ball. You need to recognize it after the fact. And so you would have to, um, you'd have to, sort of delay this call and realize that he did hand that ball forward just by virtue of who ended up with the ball and uh, we you know a late flag on this would be great but as Steve points out it never fools anyone but us so just be on your toes guys here we go all right continuing with our kicking game theme we're gonna look at a try I want you to take a look at this play and judge it I hope you saw that let me go back. All right, so we have the snap to the holder, the holder forward pass, and the runner crosses the goal line. Is this legal? Well, there's two reasons it's not legal. Let's, let's talk about the first one. Um, Rule 4-2-2 says the ball becomes dead and the down is ended when a runner goes out of bounds, is held up so his forward progress is stopped, or allows any part of his person other than the hand or foot to touch the ground. This player has his knee on the ground, so he's down. But there is an exception. The ball remains live if at the snap a place kick holder with his knees, knee or knees on the ground and with a teammate in kicking position catches or recovers the snap while his knees his knee or knees <laughs> is on the ground and places the ball for a kick or if he rises to advance hand kick or pass so yes there's an exception they meet this they meet the criteria you know we have a kicker in kicking position he's got one knee on the ground but he has to rise in order to 
advance, hand, kick, or pass. If he passes from this position, he is he's down. And I want you to notice something else. Look at the number of the player that he passes to. Number 75. So he is he is ineligible by rule uh, for a uh, for a forward to receive a forward pass. So there's two violations here. And eventually these this crew got this right. Good on them. But uh, this play is over as soon as he is as soon as he throws that forward pass. All right, moving on. All right, let's talk about kickoffs and keys. Um, what I'm showing you here are the keys, initial keys when the ball is kicked off. Uh, these four here are the uh, headlinesmen. This is the line judge. These three are the back judge. So knowing this, you know, starting off, these this is where you want to concentrate. This is where you put your focus on those. If you're the headlinesman, you're on the 30-yard line in our mechanic. Um, the line judge is on the kickers or the, re the receivers restraining line, and our uh, back judge is right here. We do not have a back judge on the field as they do in this video, um, but he still got these three uh, middle guys. So four, three, and four. Now watch what happens here. See if you can pick up the foul. Ball goes into the end zone. That's the referee's responsibility. Did you see the foul? Okay, I'm going to slow it down. Watch this player right here. Okay, we've got a block below the waist. And uh, this occurs after the ball has gone into the end zone. We tend to relax on these type of kicks because we think nothing's going to happen. Don't do that. Don't release your keys. Keep your eye on it. Blow, start blowing your whistle if you're close to the players, letting them know the play is over. But we can't miss this foul. I mean, this is obvious, right? And it's dangerous. All right, moving on. All right, goal line mechanics. We're talking about a situation where the ball is just either short or barely over the goal line. How do we handle this? And this may seem like a no-brainer to some of you more experienced officials, but I have seen this particular play screwed up on film, and it looks terrible when we do it. It looks like the crew is lost. Okay, so let's take a look at the way this crew handles it. Okay, play's over, and here they come, and you know, I love this, they've got, the, they've got their hands up with the next down signal, in other words, they're short, and they're both spotting the ball in the same spot, notice they're the foot, okay? Now, if, it's, uh, if, you, if you don't know, you can delay this call, obviously these, both, both these officials felt confident in their spot, but if this goes barely in, a lot of times you can get information from this guy. And this is a pregame uh, type of uh, discussion you have with your umpire. You know, what kind of signal he might use if he knows the ball is in uh, bef before the runner was down. He can put his uh, hand over, his, uh, over the flag on his shirt. That's a common uh, signal. Now this isn't something that we do. It's not in the mechanics book, but it's something you can talk about in the pregame. If your crew's comfortable with it, use it. Let's see what Steve has to say about this. i um, got a feeling he likes it. Okay, excellent goal line mechanics. First move to the, to the pylons. Yeah, of course. So if you're on the two, first thing you do, anything inside the five, we're going to the pylon as flank officials. And then we are going to make our judgment, and then we're going to come in hard on this type of play. Obviously, if the guy runs through and is standing in the end zone with the ball, we don't need to do that. But if it's close, we're going to come in hard. And if we don't know, we're not going to indicate anything until we get in there and take a look. And you just use your best judgment. Outstanding job by this crew. All right, moving on. All right. 
Let me let this run, see if you can spot the foul. This is not immediately obvious. So if you don't get it, don't feel bad. Okay, let's take that back. So, um, watch the player who receives the ball. Right there. Notice his uh, jersey number, 56. He, by rule, he is an ineligible receiver. 756 tells us that all A, all A players eligible by position and numbering include those who, at the time of the snap, are on the ends of their scrimmage line or legally behind the line and are numbered 1 through 49 or 80 through 99. So by rule, 50 to 79 uh, players are, are uh, ineligible. The other part of this that uh, makes him illegal is that he's not on the end of the line. He's the tackle right there. <laughs> and he's covered up by this player. So you know easy one to miss especially on a, on a kind of a busted play like this but we got to get it all right so what is the uh what is the uh foul here he's not he's not downfield so we don't have ineligibles downfield what we have is illegal touching and this is a five yard penalty from the previous spot and a loss of down all right moving on Okay, let me run this one. Keep an eye, I'm gonna give you a hint. Keep an eye on the line as to you know what's wrong here. Okay, so the foul just occurred. Uh, yeah, I think we have a little fault start there on the left guard, but that's not what we're talking about. Watch the uh, right guard, the center, and the left guard. Do it in slow motion. Okay, so obviously there we've got two. We've got the uh, left guard. I'm sorry, the right guard and the left guard uh, both going low. And you know the uh, free blocking zone. Every you know all the criteria are met for a legal low, a block below the waist. In the free blocking zone the balls in the zone the contact is in the zone the ball all the players are on the line of scrimmage everything that needs to be there is there on this play however watch this player right here that's this guy right here watch it see that that's a chop block and so that is illegal no matter what Okay, and the free blocking zone does not, you know, we don't allow chop blocks ever. Okay, so who can get this? Well, it's got to be the umpire's primary responsibility. He's, this is, these are his keys. Uh, tough one to see necessarily from back there, but you've got to get it. The, um, the referee could definitely help if he sees it. But just because we have legal low blocks, or blocks below the base rather, um, doesn't mean that we can let a chop block go. All right, moving on. All right, it's time to play. Is this DPI? <laughs> All right, uh, take a look at the play. I'm going to let you be the judge, and then we'll uh, we'll break this down. I had a little hold there. Let's take a look at it from the end zone. Watch 77. I hadn't noticed this before. I think he holds. Maybe not. Looks like he just overpowered him. All right. There's the defender. Here's our receiver. Keep an eye on the both of them. I'm going to turn off uh, Steve's comment. So you see the contact there. Let's go back in slow motion. They're both playing the ball. 
and you know that doesn't look like enough to me to to uh, to call DPI. Let's turn it. Let's see what Steve has to say. Okay, Steve agrees. Defender does not cause the receiver to go to the ground. This is not playing through the back. And I agree. the the receive the DB had the better position, and he's just feeling for the receiver, and the receiver loses his balance. Uh, it'd be a shame to take away this play on a. Um, with a, a DPI call. Let's, I want to go back here and point out some things uh, that I'm not too pleased with on this play. And it all has to do with the flank official, the headlinesman. Now watch him. The second he reads pass, he's off. He's gone. Now, in, uh, in San Diego, they encourage their uh, flank officials to drift. And I don't have a problem with that. If you can get back and cover, you know, a, a broken play or, a, you know, a play on at the sideline, fine. Drift down, you know, three, four, five yards, as long as you can get back. But this guy's down 15 yards when the ball's released. Look at this. Okay, he's at the he's at the 21 yard line. The play started at the 34, so 13 yards, he's gone. And there's nobody covering this area over here. Now. We do have our uh, umpire doing a really good job of covering the line of scrimmage. So if the you know if the uh, quarterback had gone beyond the line of scrimmage, I think our umpire here would have gotten it. But this guy is too far down, and watch what happens. He almost gets you know caught up in the middle of this play, and I think he could have made a much better call on this contact from about right here. He'd be looking through the contact. He's straight lined right now. It's coming right at him. Okay, so he can't really judge the quality of that contact. Um, there's one other thing uh, that's that Steve points out. Whenever we have a change of possession, guys, even if it's obvious, let's signal direction. Okay, kill the clock, signal direction. All right, moving on. Okay, here's a great play to end. Uh, our plays of the week uh, on this is a play at the goal line at the pylon we have a really strange personal foul called on this play and Steve's gonna highlight some of that action that's what this is all about you're gonna see green 51 come in and make contact with wide 11 and for some reason the back judge rules that 11 has fouled on this play and if it's that little shove after the hold by 51, that's just not enough. I mean, it's just not. So here we go. Uh, let's concentrate on our on the pylon and how we handle these kind of situations. So the runner's headed for the corner there. This line here represents the goal line extended. And when does the goal line extended come into play? It comes into play when the player is inbounds. Either if he's airborne, he has to be inside the pylon. Or if he has his feet on the ground, obviously he's still in bounds and then we you know the ball can be out of bounds and that's what that goal line extended uh, refers to so let's watch this now we're not going to see it real well because number 18 there uh, blocks the camera view but you're going to see a defender come in make contact right there and the ball is out so we've got a whole bunch of decisions to make here uh, you also see the flag right there that's uh that's the personal foul call. Okay, so what do we have to decide? Number one, if three is airborne, did he cross the goal line inbounds? If he didn't cross it inbounds, we have to decide where the ball, the ball crossed the sideline. That would be our forward progress spot. Okay, so let's watch this real close. And then we have to determine whether the possession was lost uh, outside, you know, be, before we got to the goal line. We really can't tell from that angle. Let's take a look at it from the side. You're going to get a much better look at this action on the personal foul. It looks even worse on this angle, I think, as far as the why he called it. So we see the interception right here. And uh, Steve's... Steve can't figure this out either. Watch what 51 does. He's holding. Uh, not going to call holding on this, but I mean, my point is, is that the foul is all on the, 
on the green uh, team, not on the white. So let's watch the action. We got this flank official just doing a great job of hustling down. There we see ball ex extends. He's airborne right there, but he's inbounds. Now the feet are in. So now he gets that goal line extended. Great job here. Look at this. Now, all that has to happen is that ball break that front edge of the, uh, of the goal, and this is a touchdown. And uh, watch the communication here between the, the flank and the uh, referee. Both come together, flank nods, and they both go up together. That's a great call. Good job. Well, that'll do it for this episode and actually for this season of uh, OCFOA Plays of the Week. It's been a real pleasure bringing these uh, videos to you. I hope you've uh, enjoyed them and I hope you've you know, got something out of them. Uh, moving forward, I will, I'm looking to make some uh, videos early in 2019 that will cover topics like ineligible receivers downfield, roughing the passer, and DPI. If you have any suggestions for specific topics like that that you'd like to see covered, just put them in the comment section below. If you like these videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Just click on my picture up there in the top right. That'll take you to my YouTube channel page. Click on the red subscribe button. If you want to view any of the previous plays of the week, just click on the link on the top left. This is Mark Andrews signing off.